This is Pat Curlin for the Real Football Network, and it's time to talk about the power rankings after two weeks of football. Man, what an explosion at the bottom of the power rankings. My five bottom feeders all won last week and are starting to climb up that ladder, which is exciting to see. Can't move them along too fast. Another win this week, we might see it differently. Top six in the, in the power rankings remain the same. New England, Green Bay, Cincinnati, Arizona, and uh, Dallas wrapping it up at six. But Dallas has got some vulnerabilities. We'll get into that in a little bit. Being in the top 12 is the most important thing to me, and I want you to stay tuned to that subject alone. Who falls out? Who rises into the top? So who fell out of the top 12 this week? Unfortunately, San Diego out. San Francisco out. Seattle out. Seattle started the year as number two, fell to seven last week. Now they're sitting at 13 on the outside looking in. Who rose up into the top 12? Where the excitement is, Carolina rose into the top 12. Atlanta with their 2-0 record and Matt Ryan leading this team and a feisty defense rose into it. And then the big surprise, the New York Jets rising up from the 20s all the way into the top 12 because of that defense. Giving up 17 points in two games, leading the NFL with 10 turnovers on defense. And Ryan Fitzpatrick not playing bad right now and they have an established run game. Going to lose Decker for a while here. They're a great wide receiver, but they've got Brandon Marshall and so far no one's been able to stop him. That's what's going on with the risers, the fallers, who's at the bottom. By the way, did you see the bottom yet? Chicago Bears, 32. Never thought I'd see that. New Orleans Saints at 31. It's a shame those two teams are struggling. The Bears are going to have a hard time getting out of that basement with Jay uh, Cutler down for a few weeks. Other things about the schedule and why I look at these teams the way I do. Who's the worst 2-0 team? I got to ask that question. Answer, at this point, Dallas. Dallas, I love them. And they're a top six team, but no Romo for at least eight weeks. And I talked to a surgeon yesterday who said he doesn't expect, expect Des Bryant back. Uh, Julio Jones had a, that injury last year, didn't come back. So those guys are sitting in a bad spot right now trying to hold down the fort. Maybe the defense can rally and make it happen. Brandon Weiner, quarterback, not so sure. Who's the best 0-2 team? Well, there's three to consider here. Detroit, Seattle, and Baltimore. Why? because all three of them played all their games on the road so far, and now they come home with eight home games. I looked at all their schedules. I say Seattle has the best chance here, and they got a head-to-head -head with uh, Detroit coming up in two weeks. But I like Seattle to rise up, get to 10-6, and six, still win the division. When you're sorting out the one-and-one -one teams, and as I had to do for the power rankings, who's the best one-and-one -one team? Pittsburgh. That's why they're in the seventh slot in the power rankings. They can score 30 points on anybody, and that young defense is starting to rally, starting to come around. They'll be right in the thick of this race to win this division, the AFC North. Who's the worst of the one-on-one -on -one teams? You can go to the state of Florida. There's three of them down there, Miami, Tampa, and Jacksonville. I'll give Miami a pass because I think they're a pretty good team. Jacksonville and Tampa Bay, one and one Everyone's excited because they got a win last week. I'd say Tampa Bay is the team that's not going to reflect an 8-8 eight and eight record at the end of the year, which would be part of this one and one there are now. No, I think they're going to struggle as the year goes on. Jacksonville, pretty feisty right now. Bortles starting to come around a little bit. But that's it. That's me, Pat Kerwin, for the Real Football Network, talking about the power rankings after two weeks of football.